guys, this is Motor Daffodil 64 and I am bringing you part two of the Love Money Rock and Roll demo. We're still playing on uh, day one in game and I, even while I was editing, I couldn't really find exactly where I'd promised to join Himitsu for lunch. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have uh, Nick, I almost forgot his name, go for a stroll instead. So that is how we're gonna kick this episode off. You're going to choose go for a stroll. One thing was certain, I could not stay in the classroom. Actually, I just didn't want to listen to Kyo Suke's empty chatter for another half hour. More stories about anime, manga, and school gossip. Every day there were new stories, but they were always meaningless. Not that I didn't like uh, Kyo Suke, he was a good friend, but I doubted he could be of much assistance when my mind was occupied with something altogether different than magical girls. I wasn't going to have lunch with Himitsu, but I told Kiyosuke otherwise. The hallways and the schoolyard were all crowded with students. That's when it dawned on me. The roof. The roof was not the most popular spot at the school. Curious to know why. I quickly stopped by the snack bar to pick up some rolls and a bottle of milk. wonder who we're going to run into up here. The door hinges, which were badly in need of lubrication, screeched awfully as a powerful gust of wind welcomed me to the roof. I was forced to take a step back and grab the stair railing to steady myself. Then I found myself on the roof. The bright sun was blinding me, but at least there was no one here. Or was there? At the far end of the roof, a girl was sitting on a bench and eating a bento. It was Iwamura. She was gazing out into the distance towards the horizon, looking dreamy. I hesitated to approach her, remembering the morning incident. What was I going to say to her? The roof appeared too small for both of us at that moment. On the other hand, I looked stupid just standing there. If I turned around now, she would think that I chickened out. What was there to be afraid of, anyway? I did want to apologize, by the way, my last episode. I, my webcam blocked her head for pretty much the entire video. <laughs> I have made sure to shrink down the size of my little webcam screen there, and now she's also centered so you can actually see her. I approached her slowly and stood nearby. Reluctantly, Iomura granted me her attention. Apparently, she had been aware of my presence all along. So, I'd done the right thing. I remembered how she behaved in the morning after the tussle with the bullies, and after that, I was supposed to feel awkward in front of her? To feel guilty? Can I sit down here? Iomura shrugged her shoulders and scooted over a little to one side of the bench. I sat down, opened the bag containing my simple lunch, and glanced furtively at Iwamura's bento. It seemed just as good as Himitsu's. Well, if Iwamura really was poor, it stood to reason that she knew how to cook. You know, I still feel awkward around her, which was really bugging me. What? If I spoke my mind now, uh, was I going to encounter the same reaction as earlier? I was wondering, why were those jerks after you this morning? Why do you care? How about because I took a direct part in that incident? Had the police been there, I wouldn't have gone into the books as an accomplice. They are always harassing me. What, just because for no reason at all? You wouldn't understand. Maybe she was right. I'd never been bullied. I don't know the full story, obviously, but it seems to me that nothing happens without a reason. Everyone has their own reasons. Iwamura said cryptically. But there are laws. I don't know. It's not right. <laughs> laws? She pulled away from her bento, turned towards me, and looked at me severely. Laws exist for others, not for people like them. <sighs> or for people like you. Should I remind you that I was the one who <laughs> saved you would have sounded inappropriate. I was the one who helped you. She said nothing back and resumed eating. You could at least have said thanks. I did punch a guy for her. I mean, really. Thanks. Did she mean it? <laughs> said Iwamura quietly. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> she slammed her lunchbox closed and got up briskly from the bench. Thanks again. Enjoy your meal. She snapped back without so much as looking at me and left. Right, see you later. I muttered to myself, quickly finishing my lunch and left for class. Kiyosuke was already waiting for me there, grinning from ear to ear. So, how was lunch with Himitsu-chan? Fine. 
Where was he going with this? He knows, doesn't he? He totally knows. Oh, really? So, that was some other Himitsu who came looking for you literally five minutes ago? Uh-oh. Maybe I did somehow indirectly promise her this is bad. Didn't you know she had a twin sister? Her name is Shinjitsu. <laughs> Please let the him be gullible enough. Oh, it would have been funny if he actually fooled him. Yeah, sure. I swear, Himitsu is the good one, and Shinjitsu is the evil one. Or the other way around. You got very lucky, by the way, because her superpower is sucking the souls out of fat and excessively curious otaku. Oh my god, I love Nikolai's wit. He's ridiculously quick. Whatever, man. Kiyosuke sounded offended and went back to his desk. Sounds like they razz each other a lot, but it seems Nikolai might do it a little more. The school day was coming to a close. Worn out students had started counting off the minutes, but there was still one more class to go. Himitsu stopped in during the break to remind me that we had agreed to go shopping after school. I didn't clue in right away. The instructor was trying, unsuccessfully, to call the class to attention, but most students were ignoring him. True, many of the other students at the school were genuinely invested in their education and keen to learn. But a good half were knuckleheads who sat through lessons only for the sake of the prestigious diploma. Why worry about such trivialities as grades or write-ups when your whole life was planned out for you decades in advance? Settle down, the teacher kept repeating. Regrettably, he could not yell at them. Wow. <laughs> Alright, if you don't come down, you're not going to find out that we have a new girl joining us today. Ooh. I'm intrigued. Okay. Instantly, the classroom plunged into silence, broken only by a few whispers. A new student? In the middle of the year? Is she cute, I wonder? <laughs> I wasn't particularly excited. I had grown accustomed to the constant hubbub, and I couldn't care less if the class gained another student since I didn't know the existing ones very well to begin with. Come in. A subdued murmur rippled through the classroom, but I felt too lazy to even lift my head. But then I felt a strong shove in the back. Hey! I turned around and looked at Kiyosuke. He sat there, mouth ajar. Goodness, who could this new person be if even these overindulged kids were reacting this way? Oh, I'm curious. Here we go. I faced the blackboard. Ha! <laughs> the classroom was a whirlwind of scarlet cherry petals. Did anyone really find this beautiful? But how? Why? I think this character's significant. <laughs> oh, she's pretty. A girl from my visions, this visitor from the past, was standing a near six feet from me. Well, go ahead and introduce yourself. My name is Katherine Winters. Actually, I know a few people here already. She quickly surveyed the classroom without pausing on anyone in particular. I look forward to studying with you. She deliberately distorted a standard Japanese greeting. Katherine Winters. So official. She'd always been just Katya to me. She was the one with whom I had watched the leaf fall. Then she moved away. She just left without giving me a reason. She left me alone, breaking my heart and shattering my dreams. I should have been mad, should have hated her even, but I couldn't. Gosh, how corny that was, how nauseatingly hackneyed. It was as if I had become trapped inside a second-rate sh sh shoujo manga. Wow, I read manga and I can't pronounce shoujo. I'm... A failure. Now she just needed glittering sparkles around her face and some wispy clouds in the background. Cherry blossoms don't do it for you? <laughs> I would wait for it. It was nothing I wasn't used to. Okay, they're gone. I was stepping back into reality. I rubbed my eyes and pinched myself hard. Nope, not a dream. Hey, Nick, why is she back? I hit the button too fast and could read the rest of the message. Sorry! Kyosuke was prattling, prattling on annoyingly behind my back. My world had contracted into a dark tunnel, with me at one end, immersed in total darkness, and her at the other, bathed in light. Except, what was waiting for me at the other end was surely no paradise. It's getting good. <laughs> Meanwhile, the teacher showed Catherine to her desk. She walked past me without so much as a glance. Ouch. I was at a loss for words. Was I to jump up in the middle of a lesson and scream, What are you doing here? I might. <laughs> I might actually do that. Oh, please let that be an option. Probably won't be. <laughs> My classmate's initial astonishment had faded away in the meantime. Many did, in fact, know Catherine because she had been a student at this school before. The rest probably just hadn't expected to see a foreigner. After all, there weren't that many of them even at our school. 
I doubted they, if they considered me a foreigner. That is, that they were aware of my existence at all. Oh, okay, here we go. I met Katya in my first year of high school. Somehow, we ended up dating. She and I, rather incredible. Her mother had been working in Japan for quite some time, same as my parents. Time passed, and everything seemed to be going well. I'm trying to think, was he here for his first year of high school? I can't quite recall if he was still in Russia or if he was here. Uh, we'll find out in a second, I guess. Then, one day, Katya told me that we could no longer be together. Something about her mother getting transferred. I might have accepted the story. I might have forgiven and forgotten. But did it not pain her even a little? Well, I was... Was I her work colleague, whom she could simply wave goodbye to, as one did when transferring offices? Why, we could have an official farewell party! I would have stocked up on gifts! I'm sorry. Goodbye now. Cold, hollow, everyday words. That does smart. And after all that, she was going to just show up at my class? Nice to meet you. I look forward to studying with you. Seriously? Was there not another school in all of goddamn Tokyo? I couldn't believe it. But at the same time, somewhere deep inside, an ember of hope remained. What if she came back because of me? And that's the reason that she's here right now. Right. Hope springs eternal. I'm normally an optimist, but I feel like she's not here because of him. Is that bad to think? I should be a romantic, but no, I'm just... It, it, doesn't, it doesn't seem right yet. We'll find out, I suppose. I'm getting ahead of myself. I was watching the seconds go by slowly on the clock. Talk to her. I must talk to her. Belle, at last. I worked up the courage and... She floated right past me, heading for the door. Had I been too slow, too indecisive? What difference did it make now? Hey, Nick, are you asleep or what? Kiyosuke's words seemed to come from somewhere afar, as if from another world. But what was I going to say to her? Hi, long time no see, how are things? Anyway, why hadn't she gone up to me first? Was she scared? Shy? Nonsense, that wasn't like Katya at all. Then she must not have wanted to talk. I knew her too well. Kiyosuke was shaking me frantically, muttering something, but I was ignoring him. Niko-kun! A new voice. Niko-kun! Kimitsu. I lifted my eyes and looked somewhere past her. <laughs> Earth to Niko kun do you read me? I snapped back to reality. Yeah, what is it? You've forgotten again, haven't you? She was pouting comically. I knew you would, so I decided to come fetch you. What did she want with me? Fetch me? What for? Oh, yes, we made some kind of plans. But what did that matter now? Catherine had left. She was moving further away with each passing second. Perhaps the distance between us now was far greater than all the miles of the Pacific Ocean. But I had no idea what I was going to say to her. I had long been secretly hoping to get over her, to let go and move on with my life, and now this. Regardless, I had to make a decision. If I were going to run after her, I had to get going. You know what? I really, I do. I want to run after her. So far, I've picked all the dramatic choices with Nikolai, like punching that guy in the face, although I didn't know he was going to punch him in the face. All right, yeah, we're running after her. What the hell was I still doing here? Sorry, I have to go. I said briskly, jumped up, and rushed for the exit. I hope he doesn't just ditch Himitsu completely and not go shopping with her. That'll be sad. Hallway. Stairs, steps flying by. Oh, I like the music. Lockers. Change my shoes? No time! I bumped into someone. He'll live. Schoolyard. Gate. This is so fun. Outside. Cars. People. I looked right. No one. I looked left. Ah! Catherine was standing next to the school fence, looking sidelong at me with indifference. It took me a few moments to catch my breath. There was absolutely no way to rush, she said coldly. Don't be so surprised. I knew you'd run after me. What else was I supposed to do? It wasn't at all how I wanted to begin the conversation. When you dash off, after all these years, it's only been a year and a half. I guess, but still, you could have said something, a simple hello at least. Let's clear something up right away. If you think that I've come back because of you, you're mistaken. Called it. Why then? That is none of your business. Catherine frowned. If that's the case, why did you choose this school? Why not? I have studied here before, and it's a prestigious school. I was forced to acknowledge the logic in her words. On the other hand, Tokyo had more than one decent private school. Either way, she was sneering at me. I was starting to lose my temper. You could have at least said a word or two. You're acting like we've never had anything. We never did. Ouch. God, this is brutal. 
<laughs> she replied, unruffled. The health completely deflated. Had Catherine always been this cold and cruel and I simply never noticed? Had she been toying with me and my feelings and then tossed me aside like an out-of-style blouse that she'd grown tired of? Katya, don't be like that. Don't call me Katya. She never did like it when I called her that, although she'd never given a reason. It certainly had nothing to do with US-Soviet relations. All right, Miss Catherine, would you be so kind as to explain what's going on? She frowned more deeply. Catherine sighed. Maybe this wasn't the best time for trying to be witty. Catherine suddenly turned around and was about to leave. Uh, without thinking, I grabbed her arm. Wait, let go or I'm going to scream. I just want to talk. Do you really think I'm going to believe this nonsense? I don't care if you believe it or not. Then who are you waiting for here? What if I hadn't come running? There was no chance of that happening. She answered more calmly and stopped trying to pull away. I let go of her arm. I know you. Ah, so do you do know me after all, because earlier you were saying we never had anything. It's all in the past. I'm here now because I had to come back. My mother got sent to Japan again. I get it. All I want is to talk, to understand. So what, am I supposed to justify myself to you? Maybe you are. To be honest, this wasn't the first time we'd quarreled. Perhaps before, I just hadn't made much of the fact, accepting it lightly as par for the course. Only later, after Catherine had left me, I started to reflect and to analyze. Only later, after Catherine had left me, I started to reflect and to analyze. What if she saw things differently? What if every one of our rows had caused her real stress and anguish? And even if that was the case, it was no excuse for acting the way she was now. If you're through with me, then at least be consistent. How do you know I haven't started a new life here? Maybe I was no longer counting on ever seeing you again. And now, you show up. You don't want to talk, yet you will always be around. That's an interesting situation we've got. <laughs> like a yoke around my neck. I don't know what a yoke is in this context. No idea. I know how it's going to be. I will have to continually endure your silent glares, even if they don't mean anything. Catherine was going to say something, but I continued. Then I myself will start feeling guilty because of your silent reproach. You've said yourself that you know me, so you must understand. And after all this, you're going to insist that nothing's going on and that you don't need to explain anything to me? You can think whatever you want. Okay, I see. So now we're gonna feign innocence, are we? How long have I been yelling, I wondered. Fasting students were glancing at me warily. The girls whispered among each other while the guys looked on in disbelief. After everything. Do you wish to tell me that we've never had anything, that we have nothing now, and that we never will? Oh, her answer's gonna just be soul-crushing, isn't it? The last part was clearly too much. I blurted out everything that was in my heart. Was I really hoping that we could get back together? I must have been. There was no point in lying to myself. But it was one thing to hold out hope when Catherine was in another country, thousands of miles away, and quite another when she was standing in front of me and treating me like a public enemy. She put on a barely perceptible smile, but I could see the contempt in her eyes. Oh, this is not going to be good, is it? I just think I have deserved an explanation. It's useless to explain things to you, Catherine remarked in parting. And then she just walks away, come on! Whatever, this isn't over yet. We're in the same class now. Girl told her friend not to look my way as the two walked past. Yeah, he freaked a bit. Oh, oh, is he just gonna go home now and ditch Himitsu? I feel really bad. To hell with it. I kissed under my breath on my way home. I think she's so special. I've seen better. I was angry at Catherine. Really angry. We had quarreled before, but this time she was just treating me like dirt. If ever there was a good time to purge her from my heart, was it not now? A bunch of boisterous middle schoolers ran past me. One of the boys caught me lightly with his shoulder and said, Sorry, Onisa. As in, dude, man, uncle, gramps. Did I really look that old? Although the way I'd been reasoning just now, I wondered how long I'd be able to hold a grudge against Catherine. Would I forget again and revert to an idealized image that clearly did not match the girl I'd just been arguing with at the school gate? Only after I got home was I able to calm down a bit. I wonder if Kyosuke and Himitsu were like watching him from the window. <laughs> I spent the rest of the day trying futilely not to think about Catherine. At this pace, I could really go crazy. Every five minutes, the phone rang. Oh, it's gonna be Himitsu, answer. Oh no, I guess not. I didn't pick up because I knew it was Kyosuke. Who else would be calling me? When it came to that crazy otaku, I was lucky he wasn't pounding on my door. In the end, I simply unplugged the phone. 
Yeah, I guess Himitsu is a neighbor and lives closer, so I guess she wouldn't call, maybe? Tried to keep myself distracted with TV and video games, but these got boring quickly. I even did some homework for a change. Played the bass for a bit, and fixed myself a simple dinner. Needless to say, I would rather have eaten Himitsu's cooking. But she must have been busy. Not that Himitsu was under any obligation to make meals for me on a daily basis. I just got used to it. You ditched her twice today, dude. You're not getting food. <laughs> now that I was thinking about it, I realized that habits had become an integral part of my life to the point where they started to take center stage in it. Catherine's reappearance was threatening to throw everything off balance. It was as if I'd grown senile and flabby in the past year and a half, to the point where I craved stability above all. On the other hand, why did I need this upheaval in my life if nothing good was going to come of it anyway? Suddenly the doorbell rang. It was probably Himitsu, but at this hour? I slowly made my way towards the door, but halfway, a thought struck me. Why would Himitsu need to use the bell? Who is it? Then it had to be Kyosuke. Or does it? Although, it was definitely late for him. The evening routine for my well-fed friend was anime into bed. He's so mean. <laughs> but whatever. However, there was nobody at the door at all. I looked around and walked outside, but the street was empty. Stupid pranksters. Yet someone had definitely been here since there was a note on the doorstep, which I discovered on my way back. This note, the note read, Nikolai, son, be careful. You are in grave danger. Certain very powerful people linked to your father are after you. This is not a prank or a hoax. Ooh, this is getting interesting. So he doesn't believe it. Yeah, sure. I suppose next I should have expected to find a busty, magical girl in my living room ready to perform my every command. Kyosuke! I shouted. It's not funny! But why bring my dad into this? My parents, the incident. They fled the Soviet Union when I was seven. In Japan, they worked as regular engineers at the Kobayashi Corporation. After they passed, I had the option of going back to the USSR to live with my relatives, but I ended up staying, seeing that I'd lived in Japan for most of my life. My father's friends helped take care of the legal formalities, while his bank account kept me from starving. Kyosuke, I called out, less confidently this time. The only reply I got was from a neighbor who barked something about it being nighttime and my yelling. Well, maybe it wasn't Kyosuke, but then who? The note was a joke, its authors had failed to deliver the punchline. And what if there was a simpler explanation? What if it was for real? I twiddled the note in my fingers. It was an ordinary piece of notebook paper, carefully clipped. The words were Japanese, written in a steady hand, although the spelling left something to be desired. Why write it by hand at all, I wondered. Wouldn't it have been simpler to type? Or, in a pinch, to clip words from a newspaper and assemble the note that way, like in those crazy grind shows. At any rate, Kiyosuke could be ruled out. I would have recognized his handwriting. You're in grave danger, linked to your father. What if it were those punks? Just because their parents were loaded didn't necessarily mean that those brats had A's in Japanese. Or perhaps Elisama's servants had decided to take revenge for the cafeteria incident. No, that was ridiculous. Who could ultimately want something with a simple Japanese student? And why now of all times? Right on the heels of Catherine's return, too. To be honest, I couldn't remember how good Catherine's Japanese grades were. I couldn't remember her handwriting either, but I knew she had spent considerably less time in Japan than I. Catherine had been a decent, but not a straight A student, and after a year and a half without practice, at any rate, she was the prime suspect now. It didn't even occur to me to ask what for. Her motives had stopped making sense to me long before this. Either way, I had tried to find some answers at school the next day. But now, it was time for bed. I hadn't felt so worn out at the end of the day in a long time. But sleep didn't want to come. It kept tossing and turning, and I was getting mad at myself for it. Meanwhile, the clock ticked past midnight. I flinched and perked up my ears. Perhaps I'd imagined it. Not again. I hopped out of bed, eye scanning the room for everything, uh, anything I could use for self-defense. The base would do. Yeah, please don't smash the base on someone's head, as funny as that would be. I walked up to the door on stiff legs and asked in a shaky voice, Who is it? Nikokan. I breathed a sigh of relief and opened the door. Oh, her regular clothes are so cute! Do you know what time it is? Sorry, but your phone was off. So, is that a reason to turn up here in the dead of night? No, but... I tried calling several times. I wanted to know if you were going to school tomorrow. If you're so concerned about my attendance, you shouldn't wake me up in the middle of the night. I'm sorry. 
Suddenly I felt bad. Himitsu was just being herself while I was taking out my problems on her. She wasn't the one who had brought Catherine back or left the note. Not, it's me. I should be apologizing. It's been an awful day. I mean, it's been a tough day. Very filled. And I was already asleep. Trying to sleep, at any rate. Okay, I'll be going then. Good night. I shut the door behind her and returned to bed. Today was tough. What would tomorrow be like? Now we're getting into day two. It's sad there's only five days in this demo. <laughs> okay, that would be the 8th of September. I'm getting the dates correct this time. 100 bells were chiming with 100 melodies in my head, announcing the morning. In that medley was the cheerful chirping of the birds, the construction on a neighboring street, the boisterous shouts of the street vendors, as well as that damn fan which had not quit humming for a second and the grumpy muttering somewhere close by. A fixed gaze of large green eyes, the pouting lips, and the two red braids. That's not red. Ugh. Just bugs me. Hold on. This had already happened before. I jumped out of bed, stared in bewilderment at Himitsu, and blurted out, What's the day today? Tuesday, she replied, frightened. What's wrong? Tuesday, huh? All right, then. Let it be Tuesday. I scanned the room meticulously. The open notebook I had tried doing my homework in the night before was still in the same spot. That meant that everything was fine. It occurred to me that the new day hadn't arrived. What do you mean? Well, like when you wake up and today's still yesterday, as in some sci-fi novel? You read too many of them. Mitsu laughed. I didn't think that for a millisecond, not gonna lie. Things did seem to be running their normal course, except I now became aware of a peculiar smell. I sniffed the air. Is that... Yes, it is. I prepared it ahead of time. A big pot of borscht sat on the stove. Good lord, but why? Didn't you ask for it yesterday? No, I didn't. I just mentioned it in passing. It was a joke. Well, you know what? She said menacingly. You're gonna have to eat this joke now. <laughs> I like her. Soup for breakfast. That was certainly unorthodox. I think all of Japanese breakfast is unorthodox. Don't some people eat, like, fish? Mitsu had outdone herself this time. Suppose yesterday I'd let drop something about foie gras and a 1978 Chateau Margaux. Would that be awaiting me now, too? In any case, the borscht tasted quite good. Granted, it wasn't exactly a traditional recipe. Well, Mitsu was sitting across from me, looking at me intently. You kind of see how she's, her eyes are just kind of focusing on him. Why aren't you eating? I'm waiting to hear what you think. Oh yeah, sorry. It's delicious. Really? She didn't believe me. Yes, yes, really. Why should it be otherwise? It means you tried the borscht. Okay, it is good. Now, don't you dare complain about my cooking again. When did I ever complain? You just don't get my humor. I do get it. Some lighthearted banter, it seemed, but he means he did not look her usual self. Every so often, a shadow of sadness passed over her face. Did something happen? No. What about you? What about me? At the moment, the events of the previous day flashed before my eyes. The surprise awakening and the borscht had temporarily made me forget about Catherine and the note. Everything's fine, just a bit unexpected. Don't worry, I'll be alright. Good, if you say so. She smiled. Let's go, or we'll be late for school. We exchanged only a few words along the way. Somehow, we just couldn't find a suitable subject for conversation. I didn't want to tell Himitsu about the note just yet. And she probably hadn't had anything happen to her overnight that was worth sharing. Sure, I could have talked about some random stuff, but that wasn't my thing. Finally, we reached the school. No incidents today, I hope. I snickered. All right, I'll see you. Don't sleep in class. Mitsu smiled and headed for her classroom. Okay, now, I have to think of a way to snag Catherine's notebook without anyone noticing. He really thinks it's her, huh? I guess in his mind, that's the only real suspect. I hoped she'd written something in it, preferably in Japanese. I was walking down the hallway, lost in thought, when someone called my name. Uh-oh. Enoch Ginkan. Hold it there. The school principal. What was his name? Yes, Kiyama-sensei, was it? Follow me to my office, please. But class is about to start. I protested, as though these kinds of conversations were something new to me. It won't take long. A wiry old man in his 70s, perhaps even older, Kiyama-sensei was always cloyingly polite and cold. On top of that, he dressed and carried himself in a strictly European manner. I'd always been astounded at those Japanese who exhibited such 
obsequious devotion to Western culture and way of life. I can think of any number of sayings on the subject along the lines of, to thine own self be true. Although here, this had been something of a tradition in its own right. This was, after all, an elite school. What's the issue exactly? And Elkin Khan, please come. Well, naturally, he wasn't going to reprimand me in the middle of the hallway in view of the whole school, was he? What if he's going to get in trouble for fighting? <sighs> oh, cafeteria girl. Uh-oh. Now you can actually fully see what he looks like. You, don't, you only really got like a side glance in the back of his head before. He's cute. <laughs> I like the hair. All right. We went into his office, but someone was already there. Huh. Well, if it isn't Oju-sama herself. It's a young lady in Japanese manner. I actually did not know that one. So, thank you, information point. Standing next to the principal's desk was, in fact, Elisama. Ah, the boar from yesterday. She seemed equally surprised to see me here. Yesterday's cafeteria incident came back to me in vivid detail. The madam did give me a kerchief in the end to wipe myself, and I tossed it into the dirty laundry at the house. Oops, I needed to return it. Let me guess, are you a frequent visitor here? She asked sarcastically. Well, I certainly didn't expect to find myself groveling at your grace's feet today. That will be all, Kobayashi-san. Kobayashi. That last name sounded familiar. Kinda sounds like the... Ooh. I have a guess. I'm gonna keep it to myself. Ellie politely took her leave of the pencil and walked past me, angrily flashing her eyes. So, Enokinkan. I'm totally guessing how his name is pronounced, by the way. I'm just going on putting the letters together. So, Enokinkan. Do you know why you are here? I've got a couple of theories. The principal sighed and gave me a sad look from behind his glasses. Enokinkan, I understand that the Japanese culture is alien to you, but here, at the school, we have students of every nationality. We endeavor to provide all of them with the best opportunities. In return, we expect the appropriate respect and adherence to the school rules. This is totally gonna be about the fighting. Here we go. I think you ought to understand this, especially considering your situation. What about my situation? Let's not make this personal now. No, what I meant, embarrassed, he ripped his glasses and began wiping them slowly with a special cloth. I wanted to say that we make no distinctions between our students. The rules are the same for everyone. I understand. In that case, you must also understand that you cannot just dip, skip classes for no reason. He put his glasses back on and looked hard at me. And, speaking of your attendance record, I understand. But, if you understand, why do you keep skipping? I... Do you know who our school sponsor is? I shrugged. Kobayashi Corporation. Nailed it! That's what I guessed! I, it was the name of the company I think his parents worked for? I guessed right! I guessed right! Okay, anyway. This name does mean something to you, does it not? The company's president himself is chairman of our school board of trustees. The centuries-old traditions. At this point, I tune him out. Kobayashi Corporation and Kobayashi Ellie. Things are adding up. Interesting. I wondered, would she still be the school queen if she had been born into an ordinary family? Family like Iwamura's, for instance. Enokinka, what's that smirk for? Did I say something funny? I'm very sorry, Kiyama-sensei. This will not happen again. I bow to the ground. All right, all right, that's enough. The old man apparently hadn't been expecting this degree of repentance from me. I have seen the error of my ways, and I promise this will never happen again. Well, that's the most important thing, the fact that you understand, and you avoid the repetition. All right, go now, or you'll be late for class. Thank you very much. I'm going now. I formally took my leave and marched out of his office. So why didn't you tell me that this Elisama of yours is a Kobayashi? There were still a couple minutes left before the beginning of the lesson. I did tell you. No, you didn't. You said your grandfather was the chairman of the board of trustees as if I'm supposed to know who this chairman is. That's the problem, that you never know anything. Anyway, why do you ask? I got called into the principal's office just now. For skipping class? What else? At this moment, the bell rang. Only now did I remember about Catherine. She sat behind me, so I couldn't watch her continuously. Was she writing anything down? I was going to grab her notebook unnoticed anyway. Surprisingly, I was hardly at all anxious. Sleep had clarified my thinking, such that I found the whole situation more intriguing than troubling. The closing bell finally rang. Catherine got up and left the classroom. This was my chance. I slowly approached her desk trying to look as inconspicuous as possible. I glanced around. My classmates were all minding their own business. I leaned down, opened the notebook, flipped through the pages. No, the handwriting was completely different. But how? Why? Sure, I had some issues with Japanese characters, but this much was obvious. Catherine did not write yesterday's note. Enokin-kan. 
I stood at attention. Caught. Exposed. Disgraced. Go to the teacher's room with Iwamura's son and bring the printouts for the next lesson. That was close. I looked at Iwamura. She stood staring indifferently out the window. She's really pretty, and I am very jealous of her hairstyle. I kind of used to have that sort of hair cut that way, but I'm growing it out now. Right now, I wanted only one thing. To get out of the classroom as quickly as possible. Uh, hi. Well, should we get going? I can go alone. She didn't even look in my direction. But we were told to go together. I'll manage by myself. Under different circumstances, I would have gladly agreed with her. Listen, I understand it all, but I've already been to the principal's office today, and I'm not burning with desire to go back. As you wish. Iwamura shrugged and headed towards the door. The hallways were unexpectedly deserted. It was as if the students were hiding out in, in anticipation of something. Oh, it's a cute picture. Iwamura walked in silence. After I defended her a day earlier, this is how she was acting. The awkward silence desperately demanded a conversation to break in. So, do you have to walk like this often? I couldn't think of anything better to say. She raised her eyes and looked at me in surprise. That was a first. So, I did achieve the desired effect, after all. Well, of course. I am the class president. Oh yeah, right. Sorry. Silence again. It's just that we've never really talked. I don't even know your first name. Why do you need to? It's only natural. Here, I'm Nikolai. This visibly embarrassed Iwamura, who seemed to be hesitating with the answer. In Japanese culture, addressing someone by their first name is a sign of familiarity. This was especially true in our case, but I didn't hold fast to all these conventions. Kagome. I'm <gasps> like an Inuyasha! Yay! A loud burst of laughter escaped my lips, spooking several passing girls who steered a wide berth about around us. Why is he laughing? What's so funny? Kagome frowned. Nothing, it's just, well, you know, it's a weird name. Kagome is a Japanese children's name and a song, children's game and a song from it. This is the reason Nikolai is surprised about his classmate's strange name. I did not know it was a Japanese game. No weirder than yours. Why? What's wrong with my name? It's a normal name. Nikolai. Nicholas, if you prefer. Or Nick. You're all the same. <laughs> she was starting to get worked up, it seemed. Who's we? The Gaijin? Gaijin means foreigner in Japanese, often used in derogatory, disdainful context and manner. No, the local morons. <laughs> How rude. Kagome snorted and turned away. Listen, do you have a problem with me? I think it's you who has a problem. Oh, really? And what is it? I'm curious. Who's that new foreigner? Oh, she saw right through him. Nice. I opened my mouth in surprise. Why would she be asking about that? Why? You've been staring at her nonstop for the last two days. <laughs> have you been spying on me? You'd have to be blind not to notice, she responded, unfazed. That's, that's really none of your business. Of course it's not. Kagome smirked. But neither is my life any of your business, so why are you prying? Had a point. Yes, she had a point. Okay, let's pick here. I'm debating between say she see as someone you'd known before and or say you used to see each other. You know, let's go with this one. Let's be truthful. Why not? We we were in a relationship at one point. Kagome's facial expression was hard to read and she remained silent. Why did you bring her up anyway? It's not every day that we have a new student in our class, and such a striking foreigner at that. I'm a foreigner too, you know. She looked at me up and down, snickered, and said, Yeah, sure. I knew it. Wrong features for a Japanese, but no, now I was being denied the title of a proper gaijin as well. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that word correctly, by the way. Are you always like this? I was starting to lose my temper. It seems like it'd be more fun than anything else. We've arrived. Wait here. Hey. Just in time, too, before I could open my mouth. Kagome went into the teacher's room, but before I knew it, she was back with a large pile of papers. Carry it. <laughs> what? All of it? I couldn't see any way to carry the heap comfortably. What if we each carry half? Didn't you, yourself, volunteer to come along? No, I didn't. The teacher sent me, if you recall. <laughs> I like her little, like, angry pout. Okay, give it to me. Kagome attempted to take all the papers from me at once. Oh no, that won't do either. Which of us looked more pathetic now? Spurred on by wounded pride, I walked fast, so the return trip took considerably less time. If he falls with the papers, I want to see an image of it. Damn. 
and dropped the mountain of papers onto the teacher's table with a thud, while Kagome took her seat and returned to her customary window gazing. I guess no one deserves to be bullied, but man, I could almost understand those punks from yesterday. Screw you, Nick. Judging by the clock, the bell was less than a minute away. I think I'm gonna leave this part here before this episode gets too long. I hope you guys are enjoying my playthrough of the demo for Love, Money, Rock and Roll. I know I am. I'm very curious to find out where this is going to go next. There's a lot more involved in the story than I was originally expecting. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be posting on a regular basis. I'm thinking I'll be posting Monday through Saturday. At least one video a day. Might get lucky and get more than one from me. We will find out. Okay, so that's all for this time. Bye guys!